Kevin. This is uh, Brian on the conducive side. I'm just uh, letting you know I just pulled up the opening champion screen if you want to go ahead and get us kick started. Perfect. Thank you very much, Brian. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today for our conducive webinar. I think you'll find that conducive is a product that really enhances your environment. As you can see, Champion's vision is really to help our customers take something that they've already invested in, whether it be Microsoft licensing, whether it be VMware from an infrastructure standpoint, and really help them maximize what they're getting out of their investment. And we think Conducive is a product that can help our customers take full advantage of the investments that they made. So as you can see, the five areas that we concentrate on with mobility, with virtualization, uh, obviously with cloud, big data, and managed IT, this fits right into uh, how we help our customers. Brian, if you want to go to the next slide. Um, and as you can see here, we, we've done this very successfully, and it's not just champion, you know, patting ourselves on the back. Uh, you know, we are the, a, a big Microsoft partner. In fact, we're Microsoft's cloud partner of the year. We put almost a million people up into the Microsoft cloud, whether it be through Office 365, Azure, Intune, CRM, and all of their products. And as you can see, we're also the 2012 VMware Infrastructure Partner of the Year. So we've done this for thousands of customers, and we really think Conducive is that one added feature that can really help our customers take full advantage of their environment. Uh, and I'm going to hand it off to Brian from Conducive, let him walk you through how the product works and how it can help you get the most out of your investment. Brian? No. Yep, thanks, Kevin. And um, it certainly is our privilege to uh, have this sit down with you and your uh, VMware customers and talk about what we're doing to accelerate virtualized environments without any disruption. Um, I know that this may be a, a, a somewhat unique approach as this is a lunch and learn um, webinar. You might have seen us at a, a local city at a hotel or a restaurant doing a a localized lunch and learn uh, seminar, but this is kind of our virtual version of that. So if for any reason somebody has not received their lunch, just let us know uh, in the chat box. And we have someone sitting on the edge of their seat to ensure that you do, th um, that you do have your lunch for you and your team. Um, this, we do a number of these webinars just like this, so as much as it can be a bit of a logistical nightmare, we have a, a team dedicated to this who has become exceedingly good at, at making sure you don't go hungry. So. Uh, we like this to be an interactive webinar. Um, as much as we've you know, come prepared with uh, you know, content to give you, we like this to be audience-driven as much as possible. So if you look at the bottom right-hand side, you'll see the Q&A box. At any point during this presentation, just type in your question or your comment. And as we move along in the presentation, we'll make sure to address that and bring that up. And then, of course, once we get to the bottom of the hour, we close out the presentation portion of this. Uh, for those of you that have a hard stop, obviously feel free to go. Uh, for the remainder of you, we'll go to a full Q&A session. So any questions that we didn't tackle during the web or during the presentation portion, we will uh, capture all of those during Q&A, and we'll make sure that we hold on the line as long as you need us to uh, to answer all the questions that you may have. So. We still have some that are uh, joining, so let me go ahead and set the table of what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about how you, how you can take your most I.O. intensive applications running on your virtual servers and hear this, make them run 50% faster without adding new or additional hardware. So let me emphasize, uh, this is a 100% software approach to I.O. optimization that provides 50% more performance headroom to your IT infrastructure without any disruption. Now, granted, some of you are you know, hearing that and you're raising a skeptical eyebrow, uh, and you're saying, you know, thanks for the pizza, Brian, but wait a second, how do you do that, and how can you prove that? So in a minute, we're going to tell you how we do it. Uh, we're going to tell you, in fact, how we even prove it in your real-world environment without any type of purchase commitment. We'll tell you how we go so far as to uh, provide a, a, a performance guarantee or licenses are free. But you should know that even though this technology is new, we've quickly amassed over 1,000 Velocity customers. And Velocity is something that is very compelling for them because literally overnight they're seeing up to 
or more performance across their existing IT infrastructure, and they're getting it without any disruption. So essentially what it's doing is their business productivity has increased while they're protecting the CapEx investment they've already made because now it's the exact same infrastructure, just 50% faster. So if you look at the slide ahead of you, this is our obligatory slide that tells you we've been in business for 100 years. Uh, it's actually been 32 years, but in software company years, I think that that almost equates. We're a global company with offices around the world. If you haven't heard a lot about us, you've certainly heard about all of our OEM partners. We like to think of ourselves as the world leaders in I.O. optimization, and we're not the only ones who think that. Uh, the top PC manufacturers in the world think the same thing, which is why our technology is OEM by nine of the top ten PC manufacturers in the world. Samsung, Acer, HP, Lenovo, you name it, and even those who supply them like the Western Digitals of the world. So. Uh, we're going to jump into the technology I have with me online at uh, this same time. I have uh, Brian Pomrenke, who is your guy on the ground, the regional sales manager for the Southeast region. And we also have online with us today um, Howard Butler, who is our senior systems engineer. And we just encourage, once again, post your questions in the Q&A box on the right-hand bottom side of the uh, webinar screen, and we will address those as we go. So. With that said, let me hand it over to Brian Pomranke, and he can uh, share with why you're probably on this call today. Thank you, Brian. Uh, as many of you guys are probably experiencing, there's a data explosion underway. Uh, I don't know if you saw the IDC forecast, but over the next 10 years, the number of files will grow by about 75 times. Along with that data explosion is, of course, an I.O. explosion, uh, as the applications that create that information and a growing number of devices uh, want to access those files. A leading Gartner analyst at a recent conference noted that I.O. growth will be a, a factor of 25x over the next two years alone. Now the challenge is uh, hardware can't keep up with the data in the I.O. explosion cost effectively. Over the next 10 years, hardware performance will increase by four to eight times, and even if you double that rate of performance gain, it's clear that hardware just can't keep up. So while hardware costs on a per unit or a price to performance basis continue to go down, Investments are going to go up as organizations keep adding hardware to solve that I.O. explosion problem and the bottlenecks it creates. If you go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, this I.O. explosion has created performance bottlenecks in part because of server virtualization. Uh, this is because a physical server running multiple VMs must often carry out far more I.O. operations than one server running a single workload. And typical virtualization environments emulate I.O. devices, which run less efficiently than native I.O. devices. So in essence, virtualization acts like a funnel, combining and mixing many disparate I.O. streams, sending these out to the disk in what becomes a very random I.O. pattern. Now to make matters worse, the more VMs that are added, the more the issues compounded as more I.O. is randomized. So all this has a very negative effect on storage performance, and it renders time-honored techniques such as read-ahead buffers, caching algorithms, and the like, far less effective than in conventional physical server environments. The storage I.O. is the most critical issue in a virtualized environment. It can cause organizations to spend a great deal on storage, purchasing more and more disk drives and striping across them to overcome the performance bottlenecks. The outcome is that due to the issues relating to performance bottlenecks in the virtual infrastructure, organizations have to keep adding storage hardware to solve their performance bottlenecks. This dependence on storage hardware to alleviate the I.O. bottleneck is a very expensive dependency, as you guys probably have experienced, and it doesn't allow you uh, to fully realize the full promise of the virtual investment. So Velocity VM, uh, as Brian noted, increases performance up to 50% without additional storage hardware. Velocity uh, VM is a virtual machine acceleration software that optimizes reads and writes at the source operating system, enabling it to eliminate application bottlenecks and enable more VMs on a single physical server. Bottom line, Velocity VM reduces the amount of I.O. that you have to deal with. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there are two primary performance barriers on virtual platforms, the unnecessary write I.O. and unnecessary read I.O. The first performance barrier is caused by the Windows OS breaking a single file into several pieces upon write. Each piece requires additional operations on the storage layer, and the net result is an I.O. penalty incurred for every write and subsequent read. Second performance barrier is created when the same files get read again and again and again. And with each read, the data must travel the full distance between the server and the storage, increasing latency and stealing storage bandwidth at the same time. 
Now, the way Velocity uh, deals with this is there's several key pieces of technology or engines in Velocity VM, but we're going to focus on two key engines. The first technology engine in Telluride eliminates unnecessary IOs caused by the OS breaking apart files. And Telluride understands when a file is broken apart and brings the pieces back together again into one IO and pre-allocates the file, so it's written sequentially to disk, optimizing write performance and read performance, of course, when the file is read back. The Velocity VM IO optimization is specifically tailored for virtual environments, leveraging a SAN or an AS, and proactively provides IO benefit without negatively impacting advanced storage features like snapshots, replications, data dedupe, and thin provisioning. A Velocity VM is designed to work with any storage system, improving its performance. So, you know, uh, Brian Pomeranke, let me ask you, is basically what you're telling me here is that if I wanted to move a gallon of water across the room, I could do that one of two ways. I could do that with 300 Dixie cups, or I could do that with a single gallon jug of water. Is that essentially what a Telluride is doing um, with that I.O. to make that I.O. denser? Yeah, Brian, I think that's a great analogy. Um, yes, you can make 300 trips with 300 Dixie cups, or you can make one trip with a bucket. All right, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little and that, bit about that comes to uh, uh, the kind of the second engine uh, that we want to talk about, um, and that is the uh, Intel memory technology. And Intel memory technology is the other technology engine. It reduces the I.O. bottlenecks by intelligently caching frequently used data based on the application, so it's application aware, its usage, and uh, time. A Velocity VM is self-learning, uh, and it intelligently caches data ahead of time, which greatly improves response time and eliminates unnecessary I.O. traffic. In other words, there are 300 trips with your Dixie Cups, and that improves your performance by up to 50%. Our caching technology is new in Velocity VM. It's been used in our OEM partners' products around the world, Ultrabooks and laptops. Brian kind of touched on some of our OEM partners early on. This technology is real-world tested across a large number of systems, providing proven and robust software technology. I'm going to let Howard uh, take over from here because he's going to drill into some of the technical details. Art, if you take over, please. All right. Well, thanks very much, Brian. So the optimization performance gains is really possible with this new approach that Intellarite takes. It is a technology innovation and a really a completely different way of thinking about things. The system monitoring technology, or, or better put, a behavioral analytic engine inside of Velocity provides that intelligent data about which files would be low performing, resulting in those split IOs. Therefore, Intellarite can use this data to accurately and, and dynamically adjust how to allocate space for those file writes so we can eliminate the vast majority of those split IO situations and do so without causing the free space to become divided into many small segments. Now, we don't spend resources trying to optimize every file. We just really want to focus on the ones which will give you the most performance benefit. Therefore, file movement is kept to an absolute minimum and only on the files which users or applications are accessing frequently. This eliminates really any compatibility issues with advanced storage features such as snapshots, thin provisioning, data deduplication, SSDs, or even tiered storage. You can really think about us as being completely hardware agnostic or independent of the type of storage environment that you have. In fact, we, en we enhance these type of storage capabilities by eliminating all the extra and unnecessary I.O. traffic so those devices can focus truly on how to best handle the I.O. traffic that they do receive. So let me go on to, to the uh, IntelliMemory technology, and this technology is a breakthrough in, in terms of how to harness and utilize that behavioral analytics towards removing and, and dealing with unnecessary read IOs and making an efficient use of a cache for those read IO requests, which can dramatically speed up the IOs per second. So again, through the use of this internal system monitoring or that behavioral analytic uh, type of engine, IntelliMemory is aware of what files and specifically the I.O. traffic patterns that make up the bulk of your I.O. read requests. 
and we can dynamically allocate a portion of unused virtual memory to act as a RAM disk. Now again, depending on the platform configuration, whether you're an x86 or a 64-bit platform, we can use anywhere between 256 megabytes of free memory up to as large as 24 gigs for that read cache. Now this cache again is dynamic, meaning that if there is ever a need for system memory elsewhere, IntelliMemory can quickly return that memory back to the pool of free memory before the system actually needs it. So there's never going to be a case where there's a memory starvation situation due to our caching technology. Now, over the course of a very short period of time, and again, using this self-learning approach or behavioral analytics, IntelliMemory can predict what files and more precisely what data blocks are likely to be read and load this information into the cache ahead of it actually being requested. Now, because it is a write-through cache, there's no need for a separate read to reload the cache when the data is modified. So again, this adds to the level of efficiency and ensures that the cache is always in sync with the data that has been written or modified. So the challenge here, uh, the caching at the guest system really is far more efficient because you're satisfying the IOs from that memory, reducing the burden being placed on the host or the hypervisor, reducing the traffic going out across the network, and allows the storage device on the back end and all of its advanced technologies to be more efficient because it only has to receive and process and deal with the IOs that are truly necessary. So as a result, this greatly improves your data access speeds and improves user and application production, as well as your workload capabilities. So Howard, it, it sounds to me then that Velocity's approach to IO optimization from a holistic perspective then is with A, a write engine that eliminates split IOs upon write due to the random nature of IO in a virtualized environment, and then B, caches active data within available server memory. Is, is this correct? That is correct. So by eliminating the unnecessary portions of IOs, you're giving your system greater headroom or bandwidth capability with no additional hardware. The net result is essentially you're just sending fewer IO down to that server network and storage, giving more performance headroom back to the system. That is correct. Not only is it fewer IOs, but the IOs that are satisfied from the cache is a direct memory-to-memory -memory type of transfer, which is many times faster than even going out to the fastest type of storage device you could possibly have. Gotcha. Thanks, Howard. Okay. So now looking at this slide, and this is kind of one of my favorite ones, I like to refer to the image on the left as the blender effect. You can kind of see all of the uncoordinated and random IO traffic from disassociated systems. Maybe you have a virtual machine running SQL. Maybe there's one running Exchange. Maybe you have a, a web hosting or a file and print share server. Um, all of these are creating their own specific I.O. traffic patterns. But that I.O. is randomly being tossed into this blender at the host, resulting in a chaos of I.O. traffic that typically overwhelms the host, your network, as well as your backend storage. So as a result, you tend to spend an ever-increasing amount of money for more and more hardware to compensate for all of that increase in I.O. traffic. Now, if you take a look, on the other hand, the image on the right, where we have velocity optimizing and reducing the I.O. traffic, you get a much more organized set of traffic patterns or data read-write requests that are going to be satisfied faster and with less hardware reducing your overall budget, and this gives you a greater workload capacity. Now, uh, Howard, R.G. Berry asks a great question here, and he, he wants to know, is, is this agent-based software, or should he think of this as a virtual appliance or a mix of both? Actually, it is not an agent, and it is not an appliance. It is a complete software solution package that really acts as an extension to the Windows operating system in the NTFS file system. So everything that we need to do is solely contained within the software product residing on each virtual guest machine. 
Okay, so it's number one, it's not an appliance. It, this is a 100% software solution, and it's not an agent. That is correct. Uh, now, sometimes when someone is asking, is, is this an agent, you know, somewhat by, or behind the scenes of that question oftentimes is, well, what type of uh, resource usage is happening uh, on the server side in order for Velocity to do its optimization in the first place? What kind of overhead are we looking at? Well, we'll get into the specifics in the next slide, but just to kind of you know, set the stage there, it is a series of, of many file filters or device drivers that simply provides hints to the Windows operating system and file system so it can do its heavy lifting in a more efficient manner. So all the work really is done by Windows and the operating system. We're just helping them do a better job. Thanks, Howard. I think that helps. Um, and I think this next slide is actually going to answer a, a number of questions uh, where uh, some folks may have about where does this software sit in the stack and where is this optimization exactly taking place. Yeah, I really like this slide here because you know, Velocity really is a different architectural approach to optimization than what most people have been thinking about. Being at the top of the stack really is that key to the IO optimization type solution. This location puts IO optimization as close as possible to the applications that you're running, which is really where the I.O. traffic is originally generated. So with Velocity's architectural approach, the I.O. is optimized before leaving the guest and therefore eliminating all that extra and unnecessary I.O. traffic. So everything below, everything downstream, the hypervisor, the server, the network, your storage devices, all can now focus on how to best handle the I.O. traffic that they do receive. Now, again, as I mentioned before, Velocity is completely agnostic or independent of the applications that you're running or the storage, therefore removing the need for any type of complex compatibility matrix list. You know, Velocity doesn't change anything in relationship to the I.O. itself. The file is an optimized I.O., uh, Windows I.O., one way of looking at it is an I.O. request is an I.O. request is an I.O. request. They all look the same. If the storage device or application that you're using um, is compatible with Windows, then it's naturally going to be compatible with Velocity and vice versa. Other solutions, though, do tend to optimize their I.O. below where Velocity sits, such as in a um, caching at the hypervisor or physical server layer. Without Velocity, these solutions are really forced to deal with all the unnecessary IOs that Windows typically generates. And therefore, they're wasting a lot of their resource or capabilities on non-productive IO. So really, the, the question to ask yourself is, wouldn't you want those other optimization investments working 100% on productive IO rather than wasting maybe 30% or more of their capabilities on that unnecessary I.O. traffic? So, uh, Howard, is what you're telling me, if, if somebody is already doing some level of, say, uh, SSD caching on their SAN device, or they may even be doing a PCIe uh, uh, hardware optimization on the server side, or you're, you're telling me that Velocity is not competitive with any of those approaches, but in fact, it's complementary to those approaches. We're complementary, and we add a level of enhancement to those type of solution sets. Thank you, Howard. So moreover, just, just to set the, the, the record there straight, you know, the compatibility with all SAN and NAS type storage devices, hands down, makes no difference whether you're running you know, storage from HP, Dell, IBM, as you can see them on the slide here. We're truly independent and, and completely agnostic to those type of solution sets. And, and again, we're, we're compatible with all the advanced technology features that they offer. We're very complementary to what they do. Um, Howard, a question has come in just about operating systems. Um, as far as operating systems on the VM, since we install on the uh, guest level, what operating systems would we be compatible with? We support um, Windows guest operating systems from Windows XP moving forward. So that would be XP, Windows 7, Vista, Windows 8. On the server side, uh, Windows 2003, 2008, as well as 2012 server. 
Now, I have a couple coming in. Uh, both Joe and Tony are asking, you know, how about Linux? And so it sounds like this for right now is a Windows-only optimization approach. Is that correct? For right now, the, this solution product is focused on, a, on the Windows platform, um, but certainly we are keeping our eye on the ball as to what's happening in the Linux world. Okay, thanks. Um, Brian Pomeranke, maybe you can jump in and tell our audience a little bit about some of the applications that are going to benefit from Velocity VM. Sure thing. Thanks, guys. So um, any type of application will receive a benefit from Velocity VM. Uh, however, you know, I/O intensive applications are a sweet spot. Uh, for example, VDI, uh, certain mobile computing initiatives and methods, uh, Microsoft Exchange, and SQL Server. In terms of performance results, uh, a third-party lab, Open Bench Labs, tested Velocity VM and an SQL query. Testing reading and writing at, at 4, 16, and 32 KB packets, uh, which demonstrated an average performance improvement of 129%. Velocity VM not only provides increased performance for random I.O. applications, but it also uh, provides increased performance for sequential read and write applications like streaming media. Open Bench, ran, Open Bench Labs ran a streaming video test and demonstrated an average performance improvement there of 131%. So as part of that third-party testing, uh, Open Bench Labs also tested Velocity VM with Microsoft Exchange. And uh, running 1,800 Outlook users with Exchange 2010, AD, and a domain controller, uh, they found that Velocity VM enabled Exchange to run up to 62% more transactions in the same amount of time, with an 89% faster response time, and a 127% increase in IOPS versus a system without Velocity VM. This was all done non-disruptively and without any additional hardware or appliances. So uh, Open Bench Labs also tested Velocity VM with Microsoft SQL Server and simulating 80 daemon processes running with SQL Server 2012, they found that Velocity VM enabled SQL Server to process up to 50% more transactions in the same amount of time and it improved response time by 118% versus a system without Velocity VM. This is also done, of course, non-disruptively and without any additional hardware. And these white papers and findings are also available on our website and can be downloaded as well. Uh, we have a new feature on, uh, with Velocity VM, and it's one of the more popular features among our users. It's called the Benefit Analyzer. And the Benefit Analyzer does essentially a before and after performance comparison on your system's real-world workloads, and it allows you to see what benefits you'll receive on your, your specific systems and environment. It allows you to validate key benefits with supervisors and stakeholders. It has a best practices guide built in, helping to ensure you're running an apples to apples comparison test to get valid data. Uh, Open Bench Labs also tested the benefit analyzer running Intel's Iometer at the same time as the benefit analyzer and found the results to be the same across both Iometer and the benefit analyzer. So, with that, uh, I'll hand it back to you, Brian. Sure, no. Uh, and uh, we're right now, we're just nearing the end of our presentation portion. And as mentioned, we will go to a, a Q&A session if there's any questions out there uh, that you want to, uh, to field with us. This would be the time to do it. In fact, um, even right now, you can type in any questions you may have in the bottom right Q&A box, and um, we will get to that. But uh, before we close this out, uh, we want to make mention of a couple of things. Uh, one is you know, how confident are we in our product? Well, not only do we provide a self-auditing uh, performance benchmark, to show before and after performance results before you buy, um, just as your regional sales manager showed you, but we also provide a performance guarantee on top of it. Um, let me ask, when was the last time you saw an enterprise software company provide a self-auditing performance benchmark and a performance guarantee on top of it? So as much as typical customers see 50% or more gains, we're willing to guarantee a minimum of 25% or the software is free. So as much as we throw around performance numbers and percentages, you know, really uh, what we want to say is don't take our word for it. Uh, evaluate velocity in your real-world environment. Throw workload at it and see for yourself how fast velocity accelerates your applications. Uh, we feel it makes us the only performance product that lets you quantify the benefit and see the performance result before you buy anything. Um, so try getting that from a SAN or an AS vendor, right? Uh, what we try to do is we try to take out the gambling so you can have an established ROI before you make any movement with the product itself. So if you look at the next slide, 
Um, we do get a number of questions that generally come up. Hey, you're telling me what, you're con what you can do for virtualized environments. How about my physical server environments? We do have a flavor of velocity uh, for physical servers. Um, the highlight of this uh, presentation was about what we're doing in a virtual environment, but if your environment uh, is not 100% virtualized and you are keeping some of your I.O. intensive applications on a physical server, um, Velocity can also help accelerate that server and that application. So uh, this slide in front of you is just simply a slide recap, and I, but I think we've already said everything that needs to be said by this point as far as giving you an introduction. Velocity is a non-disruptive approach to improve performance. It allows you literally overnight to increase business productivity. And since we're now giving all that performance headroom back to you, it means that um, all of the money that you had allocated um, for perhaps storage purchase can now be uh, reallocated uh, to other areas of your business uh, to make you more competitive. So now I should mention that this concludes our presentation portion. You can go to our website, conducive.com. You can visit the, our Velocity page uh, where you will see independent lab reports. You'll see a couple, a couple papers from IDC validating our technology. Um, you'll see customer performance results and more. So if you're interested in talking with us more, if you want a deep dive uh, on the technology, uh, if you want to move forward with setting up an evaluation, obviously you can reach out to your uh, champion rep, and um, we're happy to tee up that conversation, and obviously they will bring in uh, Brian Pomeranke and uh, his SC as needed. And so, uh, Kevin, I know that you're on board with us here. I don't know if, if you have some closing remarks that you wanted to say on your end before we move to a Q&A session. No, I, I can only tell you, you know, our real-world experience with this product. In fact, we, we put it down in the lab. We put it through its paces. And I'll tell you, I think your, your estimate of 25 or 50 percent better performance is, is really low. We've seen a lot greater res, um, um, numbers than that in our lab. In fact, uh, you know, we're a big VDI company, and, and a lot of our customers are looking for, like you said, that ultrabook experience in VDI. And this has actually brought it into a lot of our customers where they're now getting double, triple, and even four times better response time from the applications that they're running just in, in virtual desktops, not even counting databases or other things. So uh, I can tell you from just, just from our experience how well it's worked in, in the environments where we've tested it. Okay, super. Um, I am getting uh, some response here asking, are we going to make this presentation available? Um, they'd like to share with other stakeholders within the organization. The answer to that is yes. Um, as soon as this presentation is over, um, we'll make sure that uh, you'll get an email from uh, Brian Pomeranke that has a link to the deck. And then as soon as the on-demand link is generated, we'll make sure that that gets issued to the rest of the team. That typically takes about 24 hours. So we'll make sure to get that uh, into your hand. So, you know, uh, Brian uh, Pomeranke, what I'll do is I have a couple questions here that are probably best handled by you, and then I have some more technical questions to throw back at Howard, but uh, we're getting some good questions, at least the type of questions I like to see right off the bat. And uh, Toby is asking here, can you tell me what this costs? Sure. Um, so it's, uh, the license is a perpetual licensing model. It's, uh, we do have uh, economies of scale, tier pricing discounts, of course. Uh, it's priced by the physical core, um, and it really depends on, on your environment. But uh, it's about half the price of an appliance-based solution, you know, a, a flash or SSD augmentative memory cache uh, solution. It's about 20 cents on the dollar of the hardware uh, that you'd need to do to try to get this performance. I'd be glad to talk with you about specifics. But what I really need to know is, is the core count, uh, physical core count in your VM environment or environments that you'd want to uh, look at doing this on. Um, so uh, I can tell you the retail uh, price uh, is three hundred and forty nine dollars for the perpetual license uh, per core. Okay, sure. And uh, and Toby and anyone else that's online, that's that's a, a great uh, first step and part of that conversation that you'd want to be having with um, Champion and then also uh, Brian there to support them. Um, and you know, Brian, this would also be for you. RG is asking here. He said if. If we're, interested in tr if we're interested in trying the software, how do we go about doing that? What are the next steps? Sure. The, um, I, I would ask you to, uh, uh, of course, you can reach out to us, but uh, pref prefer that you reach out to your champion uh, 
uh, client manager. And uh, what we'll do, it's a simple link that we'll send you along with a, uh, a, a date expiring key. Uh, it's a 30-day free evaluation, uh, free to load it on production, test prod, whatever. Um, and uh, uh, we'll assist you with uh, both some best practices around that. Uh, the average installation, usually in a smaller VM environment, takes anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes. It can take much longer if you're talking thousands of VMs. Um, but uh, if you would reach out to your champion uh, client manager, that'd be great. Okay. No, that's super. Um, Howard, we have uh, some questions that have come in. All right. And um, I know that I don't know if, if you've seen some. Um, just on your side that you're wanting to jump into right away. If not, I'll go ahead and throw some that I've seen. I want you to go ahead and toss me a few. All right. Um, it looks like Yvonne is asking here, is this a solution where the data store is presented to the appliance and it represents it back as an NFS data store? Um, Yvonne, I'm not sure if, if I'm quite f fully getting what you're wanting out of that question. You, Howard, or do, you, do you know what he might be getting at? Well, in, in looking at that, I mean, we're not creating any type of data store, okay? We are dealing strictly with the behavior of the Windows operating system and the NTFS file system. So everything that we're doing is within the context of Windows, and we don't necessarily have to present anything to anybody because everything is presented to us as a Windows I.O. request. That's where we sit, live, and breathe is within the I.O. traffic stream within Windows. So we do support both NFS, uh, SIS files, uh, shares. So long as Windows server, that guest system, sees it as a standard local type of disk volume, then we're good to go. We'll provide a level of benefit that is really unimaginable in terms of performance. Okay. And, and, and Howard, this is Kevin. Maybe maybe I can help a little bit. This is inside the VM. This has nothing to do with the data store from VMware. This is spe specific to that VM's operating system. So it ha doesn't do anything with VMware at all. In fact, you know the the VM could be running. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, in Hyper V if you wanted to, or in in Red Hat KVM because it's inside the VM operating system itself. Exactly right. Great, great way of putting it, uh, Kevin. I appreciate the backup on there, and and I think that also helps to clarify or answer Clarence's question, where he was asking, is it only a VMware solution, or can we optimize uh, within other hypervisor environments? And as you very well put it, Kevin, we are hypervisor agnostic. We live and breathe within Windows, and therefore really don't have any concern or care about whether it's Hyper-V, whether it's VMware, whether it's Red Hat KVM, uh, any hypervisor, uh, so long as the guest OS is running a supported version of Windows. Good. Okay. Um, Howard, a, a question, and this is related to our, our read optimization engine, our, our caching engine. Um, the question is, do we have to add now more memory to our uh, server to take advantage of that technology? In most, and I'd say in, in the vast majority of all the situations, the answer is no. You do not need to add any additional memory because we're relying and using what memory you currently have free and available that's currently not being used, uh, and it is being, being allocated by us in a dynamic way. So as your workload does shift or change throughout the day, Maybe you do become more memory intensive, in which case then we give back memory pages from our cache back to the operating system for it to use. Now, those rare corner cases where you're already in a very memory short type situation, then yeah, you're, you're going to see better benefit from velocity if you do um, resolve those type of situations first. But the vast, vast majority of systems have uh, an abundance of free available memory that we can put into play. Gotcha. Okay. I think that that helps. Um, if you still have an outstanding um, you know, follow-up question to that, feel free to jump in and, and chime in. Um, I'm having a question here, and maybe, Howard, this just comes to not fully understanding um, what our uh, technology is doing, but the question is, what happens if your appliance crashes? 
Well, it's not an appliance. We're, we're, we're layered in within the Windows operating system. We're an extension to, to the OS. Um, if anything were to stop within our side of things of what we're doing, those IOs tran uh, fall through the IO stack just as they normally would. So there's no downside whatsoever. Okay. Uh, now, David has a follow-up question to an earlier answer you gave during the, the webinar, and, and it has to do with being agent-based. And he asked the question, if how is the installation of a piece of s software on the server not an agent? Well, if you think about the, the definition of an agent, you're collecting statistical data and then passing it over to some other operating system or some other mechanism for it to, to process that data. And that collection of data and passing it through to be processed elsewhere, is that's kind of the approach an agent takes and is very um, strenuous on the system, causes a lot of extra overhead. So everything that we do as a software product contained within inside of Windows as I mentioned before, we're really just providing that helpful hint to the operating system so it can do its job more efficiently. Okay, thank you. Um, David has a question here wondering you know, if he's trying to increase the performance of his servers that are using local storage instead of a SAN, you know, what type of product should he be using? Should definitely be using Velocity as well. Now, regardless of whether the storage is local inside um, the host system, or if it's a SAN NAS, we're completely agnostic and independent of where that storage is. So long as Windows sees it as, as uh, an NTFS volume, we're good to go. We're gonna provide that level of benefit that we've described. Okay. Uh, now, Tony is jumping in, and this sounds to be another uh, Hyper-V actually related question. Is it possible to run Velocity on a Hyper-V host and thus improve performance to the hosted VMs? Well, uh, the architectural approach that we've chosen is that we want it to be inside of each Windows guest system so we have better visibility of the I.O. traffic and the nature or the way in which Windows would process that I.O. request. It just simply makes more efficient use uh, of the resources to be with inside the VM as opposed to being something that's layered or sitting on the guest or, excuse me, on the host system. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and we do have a question here, and, and Brian Pomeranke, this may be a one for you to field, uh, but the question is, so do we have to license the entire VM farm? Uh, that's a great question, but uh, uh, no, you don't have to. Um, the, <clears throat> you know, the, there is a dilutive effect if you're using VMO, if you're vMotioning into a VM environment that is using velocity, uh, of course, because the the VMs that are uh, vMotioning into that environment that have velocity will, uh, de you know, degrade the return on investment, if you will, or, or you know, dilute the performance optimization. Um, but it is certainly not required. Recommended, okay. but not required. Okay. Um, guys, I'm going through my Q&A box. I don't see anything on my side that still needs to be tackled unless you guys uh, see something that's coming directly to you. Okay. I mean, well, with that, you know, Kevin, I might throw it at you. Do you have any closing remarks that you want to give on your side uh, before we close out today? No, and, and like you said, you know, you guys stand behind your product so much that you'll allow them to get a trial copy of this that, that will expire and, you know, get the type of results that we talked about. Get a hold of your champion representative, your client manager, or your solutions architect, We'd be more than happy to work with Conducive, get you a copy of this to run against your hardest workload. We've done this for customers, and I'll tell you, you know, the proof's in the pudding. You can always see, you know, what the, you can take this uh, tool that they have, take readings before you put in Velocity, put Velocity in, take readings after, and you'll see the difference. Uh, it's nothing that, that we do. I mean, it's all around the product. So just get a hold of your champion representative. All right, super. Um, Brian Pomerinke, any closing remarks from your end? Um, no, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, everybody, as mentioned before, it was our privilege to sit here with uh, alongside Champion and have this sit down with uh, all the, the VMware customers of theirs. Um, as mentioned, you will be getting a copy of this presentation as soon as we close out the webinar. 
And you can also visit our website at conducive.com, that's C-O-N-D-U-S-I-V. Visit the Velocity page uh, as there's plenty of uh, validation reports, analyst reports, uh, customer benchmarks that you can see, and we're happy to engage you as soon as we close out. So thank you for joining today.